Hello everyone and welcome back to part development in Kerbal Space Program with Realism Overhaul. This part is configured for Realism Overhaul. I don't know how balanced it is in stock to be honest, though obviously if you dump the Realism Overhaul configuration, uh, you would be able to use it with liquid fuel and oxidizer and mod propellant. It would need mod propellant because it has RCS thrusters, but this is Blue Origins Blue Moon and before anybody notes it, I know that the model that they showed off had Blue Moon here, not Blue Origin, but First of all, I doubt they're actually going to have lettering on that anyway, because it's complicated. They're probably going to cover it with uh, foil insulation. And in any case, it's more of a thing, uh, at least for American craft, to have the company name or organization name like NASA on it uh, than the name of the craft. That We don't usually do that. But anyway, uh, so this is what it looks like. And the engine is the BE-7. So if we take a look here... I've modeled the BE-7, and so there's a hydrogen-oxygen stage, which is fairly rare for a lander stage. I don't think there is another one, so if you want to use one, uh, this is where you want to go. Of course, uh, you can make your own with procedural tanks and everything. I've tried to do justice to the twisty pipe thing that they have on the BE-7, but I didn't get all of the twisty pipes, so it's not perfect, but it's okay. And most importantly, it's, it's functional, right? Uh, so we've got hydrogen and oxygen and uh, hydrogen gas. Now that's important. There are two variants of this lander. Uh, there is the one that uses hydrogen gas thrusters at 260 seconds ISP, which is what hydrogen gas would get. So far, nobody's actually made hydrogen gas thrusters to the best of my knowledge, but uh, it is a possible thing. Uh, I've seen a paper on it about how much performance it would get. And this alternate variant has hydrogen and oxygen, liquid hydrogen and oxygen actually being combusted in order to run the RCS. And that gets 400 seconds of ISP. So yeah, it's up to you which version you want. The Hydrolox RCS is less of a headache. The hydrogen gas, you're going to have to use a built-in module, which I'll show you outside that converts the liquid hydrogen into hydrogen gas, or you can rely on the boil-off. In Realism Overhaul, Real Fuels produces boil-off, and that boil-off will be stored as hydrogen. Much to my surprise, actually. I did not realize that functionality until I brought this out. Well, I heard about it, but I never put it to use until I brought this out. Now, you'll notice I don't have the rover deployment stuff that they showed off, and that's going to have to be a separate part anyway. Uh, this already has an animation for the landing legs, and that's what that looks like. It's somewhat simplified. Uh, it doesn't have a central piston. Uh, if if you notice some discrepancy in the model, don't don't worry. I know. <laughs> uh, for instance, this little window right here actually extends all the way out here, but I couldn't figure out how to make that work and still fit in the tank. And um, this might be larger than I have it here. I made it four meters. And that's because 4 meters is convenient um, for stuff like this, right? I think that's a nice size, but it might be larger than this. And uh, 4 meters was the minimum it could be. And so this is the least that this lander stage can be. It could be larger. And maybe I'll make a larger variant uh, later on. But... And of course, there's a stretched variant, which is completely different, um, which is taller. And that I have not modeled yet. So, yeah. But basically, if we had this, uh, I think, is close to its payload capacity of 4.5 tons. Uh, so it's 4.375 uh, tons with the lunar module there. And they said it could get 4.5 tons to the lunar surface. I think if you put the lunar module on, let's make sure... Of course, it shouldn't be able to use these fuels anyway, but let's just make sure. Okay. Um, 2,300 meters per second, I think, would be enough to land on the lunar surface. The question is whether the lander stage is supposed to get you into orbit around the moon first. And I don't know. Uh, it could be that the third stage of the uh, New Glenn from Blue Origin would be able to make orbit uh, because the BE-3 we know is a relatable engine. So I don't know. And if they're using hydrogen gas thrusters or hydrolox thrusters on the Blue Moon, they surely would use it on the third stage of the New Glenn. So 
it would have orientation thrusters, obviously. So anyway, but that would be enough to land on the moon. So I think this is sufficient and pretty light, right? Nine tons is pretty light. So that's very good. As far as what it could land um, and take off again with, which would take, you know, 4,400 to 4,800. I usually budget 4,800. I think it's about a ton, but we can check with procedural tanks. Now, I size these tanks based on procedural parts and, of course, just sheer volume calculations to double check. So they should be all right. So if you put ab gas here and we make it big enough, so that's, let's say 4,400. So that's about 1.1 tons, and that would be okay for landing on the moon and getting back into orbit around the moon, barely. Uh, if you want to land at a particular location, you need to have 4,800, which is smaller, uh, 855 kilograms or so, okay? Now, I think I should configure this with the lunar module just for the heck of it and bring it outside and see how it works in practice. Okay, so we're currently in KSP 1.3.1, but I've tested it in 1.6.1 as well and it should work. Um, if you want the shininess, you need textures unlimited. And if you try and use it without textures unlimited in 1.6.1, um, I, I don't know, there might be some issue, but uh, Textures Unlimited is the only requirement except for Realism Overhaul, of course. Though, again, you can try and use it in stock. And uh, it should have liquid fuel oxidizer mop propellant and the engine should work. And the engine plume works. And the RCS plumes work too, even in stock. So, everything should be fine. It's just a matter of balance. Now, there are a whole lot of other quirks about this, but um, I obviously can't launch it like this. I don't have a good new Glenn. Um, I saw Super Penguin's New Glen, but it doesn't have the BE-3s, which uh, the New Glen... Now, the second stage used to have BE-4, but now it has BE-3s, so I need to model a BE-3 to make that work out. Uh, so, yeah, that'll be next up. But for now, I'm just going to cheat it into orbit. And we'll probably cheat it into lunar orbit as well. But uh, let's just uh, test out basic operations here. I should mention that the little cubby holes, uh, these gaps here, um, the collider is flat here, so if you put something in there, you might not be able to click on it. And that's actually a cubbyhole for the guidance and control and navigation. Uh, actually, there's supposed to be a door here for the other payload that you might want to plop off. But really, for now, this is simplified, obviously. Uh, let's make sure that the animation works. Uh, yes, it does. Okay, activate engines. So obviously we need to settle the fuel down and RCS uses hydro this is the hydrogen gas one, which is the more complicated one. Uh, if it's uh, liquid hydrogen, liquid oxygen, you got the simple situation. But you can see there's a little bit of boil off. In 1.6.1 uh, to control boil off, you can add MLI layers with uh, real fuels. Uh, right now this is configured as a service module stage, which has limited boil off, but it still does have boil off. And we'll see that in a moment. So if I sell the fuel down here, we can see the fuel is settled. And the engine lights. But I don't want to use the fuel right now because I want to use it for landing. I'm going to turn RCS off. You can note that right now uh, the there is boil off, but we are replenishing hydrogen gas because of the boil off. Okay. And that little RCS buff took a lot of hydrogen. Okay. These thrusters are currently configured to 110 newtons. 0.11 kilonewtons, but there's a lot of them. Uh, there are about 28 little RCS thrusters, so it can turn pretty quickly. Um, let's get an example. And that's without the LEMS RCS. Now I underfueled the LEM for landing operations because I don't need a more than 2,100 to ascend from the lunar surface. Right now it's 3.5 tons instead of 4.5. That gives me more landing margin, but that's only for you know accurate landings. And of course, I've added the coupler and the lunar module engine, uh, the ascent engine. Okay, so 
But let's say you need hydrogen gas really quickly because you know you're in the middle of landing. You really can't just wait for boil off, right? And of course, if you have MLI layers controlling boil off, that won't work. Well, there's a module in here that says start hydro gas production. And that will take the liquid hydrogen and convert it into hydrogen at a rate of 700 to 1. So have 700 units of hydrogen gas to one unit of liquid hydrogen, which seemed to be the conversion rate that they were using for the boil off as well. And uh, that jives with the mass of the two. So basically one unit of liquid hydrogen has the same mass as uh, 700 units of hydrogen gas thereabouts. So it shouldn't be increasing our vessel mass when we do this, right? That's conservation of uh, energy, matter, whatever. Um, under no circumstances should uh, this go up while we're doing this conversion, and it does not seem to be. It's going down a little, so there's a little bit of... Uh, and that's actually because the RCS is still puffing a little bit. Every time it goes off of 700 there, the RCS is puffing to keep us on prograde. Okay, and while, while that's running... Now, realize that this is the current fuel mixture for the engine. So eventually you're going to end up with surplus oxygen like this. So you might want to just use real fuels to change the contents of the tank and replenish oxygen. Now you saw how quickly the RCS diminished there. Maybe thrust limit the RCS so that doesn't take so much. But if it's hydrogen gas thrusters, this is the situation. So you'll be you'll have a simpler time dealing with the hydrolox thrusters. That's why I made that version. Okay, and of course all of this is gonna be in the video description. Okay, well let's try and set this around the moon and see how it works. I don't think uh Smart ASS likes the thrust limiting. I'm just gonna let it float around. And on top of that, I should probably activate the RCS up there, but maybe not. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. This is the first time I'm going to try and land on the moon with it. Okay, well, this is obviously way too high around the moon. It's still too high. Uh, we'll see how low it'll let me go. Okay. All right, we'll start from there then. So I'm going to constantly run the hydrogen conversion system, but we can stop that anytime. It does not have any onboard power production, so keep that in mind. It doesn't take too much power, it takes about 0.1 per second. The rest is currently being taken by the lunar module. Okay. Now, thrust weight ratio wise, it's not too bad. Uh, around the moon, we're starting off at three already, and we max out at five. It does throttle down to 10%, and then the lunar module ascent engine has about the same, so pretty reasonable. So, without further ado, selling the fuel down and ignition. Obviously the engine gimbals, so you should really have limited RCS use while the engine is on for descent. And this one has 10 ignitions altogether. I might have to reconsider that, but we'll see. They didn't really say how many ignitions it should have. But for just a single lunar landing, that should work. But if you want to reuse it, that's a little bit harsh. I'll concede that the textures are a little bit flat. I really don't know. I mean, I could make them shinier, but... Their model was rather flat, you know, the mock-up. Only the tanks were particularly shiny, if you will. And it was all shrouded in blue. There is no suspension on the landing legs. That would have been more painful for me to do. So they're just stiff legs right now. Very nimble. Maybe I should tune down the thrusters. They could be much less than this, I think.
And I've wasted quite a lot of fuel, by the way. And you can see the fuel imbalance. They are a little bit too nimble. I won't tune them down right now, but I'm thinking maybe 45 newtons will be enough. And they're pretty small, so. So I've taken quite a luxurious amount of fuel. Oh, I think we've landed. RCS off. Okay, well, I'm not going to have Jeb plant a flag right now. I'm just going to verify that the uh, Lunar Ascent module can get back to orbit, given all this. So I'm going to lock the fuel here, shut off the engine, uh, and uh, turn off the RCS, turn RCS on, and throttle up. You're supposed to be off. <laughs> But anyway, I locked the fuel. Um, let's make sure the RCS is enabled here. And stage. And again, of course, if you use the Hydrolox version of the Blue Moon stage, you will not need to worry about the hydrogen and oxygen getting imbalanced because the thrusters then use both at the same ratio as the main engine, the BE-7 engine. But I'm not too sure which version they're using or if they're even using some sort of hypergolic fuel, though. Once they've started storing the hydrogen and oxygen on the stage, I don't know why they would want to use the hypergolic fuel instead of the boil-off, for instance. Now, remember, I dumped some fuel out of this. So that's less than it normally would have. And I'm actually curious to see whether it's going to make orbit right now. It's got to be close. Yeah, I got it right. Okay, so that's barely enough, but enough. Uh, so that's the 3.5 ton version. And if you're going to, you know, land 4.5 tons of Blue Moon, you'd better be very accurate with your landing compared to what I did, which was not. And of course, you'll probably want the Hydrolox RCS version, not the one that's going to leave some oxygen behind. So anyway, but uh, with this being where it is, heck, let's go back to the Blue Moon. Okay, so having demonstrated the capabilities of the Blue Moon lander stage with the BE-7 engine, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.